Okay, so now we are going to discuss a new topic, which is the equation of a line and how to describe lines using vectors. So, uh, with not uh, like the topic of vectors is just like a tool to describe most of the things we are actually interested in studying in this course. Um, lines is like the uh, first topic, uh, which is closely related to what we will do next because you can really think of a line as a specific case of a curve right so what we have what I have in mind well the lines that you know from calculus are something like this y equals mx plus b, where m specifies the slope and b the intersection with the y-axis. And that's fine, Is yet, but uh, if you think about it, this equation gives you y in terms of x, so it introduces an asymmetry between x and y, which uh, you don't necessarily want to see present when you try to understand a line. Uh, for example, if you had, which is what we will study very soon, if you have a line here, like this, well, we still want an equation that describes this line, but um, it, mm, it's not necessarily useful to write everything in terms of x, although most of the time you could do it. Rather, what you want to think is uh, the line as being the trajectory of a particle. So the point of view that you, we will take in this class uh, is lines are, is, uh, is a trajectory of a particle Uh, moving with constant velocity, although I still haven't said precisely uh, what I mean by velocity, we all have like an idea of what that should be. And so uh, the point is that you want to think of this line as like maybe at some time You have a particle here, the particle is moving at constant velocity, so at another time is here, at another time is here. Okay, and so when you superimpose, imagine that you take a picture at each instant of time, so at each instant the particle is somewhere, and then uh, you just like put together all the frames, and that's how you get the trajectory of, of the particle. So a line is just a very specific case, a special case where the velocity happens to be constant and in general what we will do next is study curves which is when the velocity can vary from instant to instant. Okay, uh, now so as I was saying you think that uh, you're taking snapshots of this, uh, the, this motion so Maybe at, with your clock, you take a picture at time t equals zero. Maybe this is time t equals ten. Okay. Maybe this is time t, where t you just think of some variable. And so the point is that uh, by just knowing the value of the time, you can determine where the particle is supposed to be, right? Because at any given time, the particle has to be somewhere. And so what I'm trying to say is that instead of specifying a line with the variable x, what we will do is uh, determine an equation for the line in terms of t. So what we want to do is find, so the goal is to find a 
of a line in terms of, vari of a variable t. Which again, you think of this variable as being time, but uh, that's not necessary for the mathematics of what's going on. And so, uh, so t is like substituting x in this point of view, and then we have like we need like substitutes for m and v. Uh, essentially, uh, v was like the the intersection with the y-axis, right? That happened when x equals zero. So the natural analog of that is just uh, having like a specific reference point where we know the particle went uh, passed by. So you need to know, in order to specify a line, you need to know a particular point on this line, p. So p is some reference point. And then uh, after you know this, uh, so this is like playing the role of the letter B, and M is like an inclination or slope. If you think of M, you can compute it like from the y dx, which is some sort of derivative, and velocity we know is like a derivative as well. So M is going to be replaced by the information of a vector d. Okay. And you think of this vector as a velocity vector. So again, uh, the equation of a line, which we're, uh, that we're after, is called the vector equation of a line. And the data that you are given, the input data, is uh, the point P and uh, direction vector V. Which again, you think of as a velocity vector. Now, what's the output? The output, we want it to be the equation of the line, right? And for us, that means just to be able to specify the position vector of, of the particle at any time. So imagine that there's a position vector here. And so what we want to find is a formula for this position vector in terms of t. And again, this point P, you can think as, as being specified by some position vector. Uh, R sub P. So again, you're moving at, uh, so what you should really think is that there's uh, this vector, right? This purple vector, which goes from the, the reference point P to the specific point that you care about, right? And so this is uh, the vector, uh, let's call this point uh, Q. So there's a vector PQ right which is uh, the vector from P to Q and now what is this vector? Well uh, this was at time t equals zero here you are at some time t 
this is a displacement vector how much has a particle displaced well re remember that uh, this is like the analog of distance equals speed times time right uh, displacement equals when it's constant velocity it's not too hard to see that displacement should be velocity times time so this should really just be the velocity times the time right because remember that just uh, velocity equals uh, displacement or uh, over time okay so this is a vector remember that uh, vectors can be multiplied by numbers so this is okay but on the other hand we also know a formula for th the displacement vector which is the difference between the relative position vector so this should be also the position vector of the point Q minus the position vector of the point P And so, uh, what is the position vector of point uh, Q? That's what we are calling R of T. The position vector of point P, well, again, that's part of the input data, so that's just something that you will, will know in practice. And then you get uh, T times V. And again, like you should think of, of P and B as known, known quantities. So again, you should think of P as an intersection, intersect with the y-axis, that's the analog of that. And you should think of B as the slope, the analog of the slope, and T is like the analog of X in this formula. And so what we find is a desired equation which is that the equation of a line is r of t equals p plus t v. So that's the vector equation of a line. Okay, so let me do an example uh, to make things more concrete and in the next video I'll do some other examples with lines. So again, the formula is not too complicated to use in practice. Say, what's the equation of the line uh, if the point is just uh, like, I don't know, 1, negative 1, 2, and the velocity vector is 1, 7, 5, then the position vector of the point on the line is always P plus TV. Which is uh, actually this is okay as an answer if you choose to write it this way. Now there's a more interesting interpretation of this equation or a slightly different framing which is known as a parametric version of the equation which again like the position vector really is, uh, a, po is a position of the co x coordinate, the y coordinate and the z coordinate, right? And so if you think of um, p as being x naught, y naught, z naught, because those are the values of time zero, and v as v1, v2, v3, the component of the velocity in the x y and z directions then the equation of the line r of t 
equals P plus TD really becomes uh, X of T, Y of T, Z of T equals uh, P, which is uh, X naught, Y naught, C naught plus T, B, which is B1, B2, B3. And that gives you an equation per entry. Which is x of t equals x naught plus t v1. Uh, y of t equals y naught plus t v2. And z of t equals c naught plus t v3. So this looks more like y equals mx plus v, right? And so you see that by writing it this way, every single variable, x, y, and z, is represented in a more symmetric way because they all sort of have the same structure in the formula. So that's like the advantage of writing things in terms of t and not just like uh, substituting, uh, writing everything in terms of x or y or z. Uh, so I'll say more about this once we get back to curves. What I'll do in the next video is an example about intersecting lines so that you see how it's done from this point of view.